here to talk on seeing and using your hands in VR is CEO of Gleechi, Jacob Johansson. All right. Hi, everyone. I'm Jacob from Gleechi. We're a startup company coming from uh, Stockholm, Sweden. We focus on one thing in particular, and that is making the animation of hand movement and interaction look very realistic. Uh, we don't do any hardware or anything like that, so uh, th that is literally the only thing we do. So I'm going to talk about seeing and using your hands in VR. This is going to be a little bit more focused in the VR direction. Uh, I'm going to talk a little bit about kind of our concrete experiences and, and uh, recommendations from working with hands for uh, two years in the segment of VR, uh, but also quite extensive research from robotics, as well as some kind of best practice that we've seen uh, around uh, the VR industry. So in essence, this is kind of technology that we are coming from originally. Uh, we used to develop software to make uh, robot hands be able to pick things up in, in real time. So this, uh, this is essentially our software telling these robots to kind of pick this car up uh, in different ways, to kind of play with it. Um, and it's quite complex stuff. I mean, uh, robotics has been doing quite a big journey the latest uh, 60 years in terms of hands. And we realized that the problem that we've been focused on in robotics is probably going to be a big problem in the field of VR as well. And about two, three years ago, and when, when we started looking into VR, uh, you know, we, we didn't really see that many examples of free hand interaction. Uh, one of the few was uh, Surgeon Simulator, a very brilliant game, but the hand interaction looks so-so, uh, uh, to say the least. And this is kind of what we expected to be an issue related to, to VR, to make this, you know, picking objects up look re realistic. So it's, it's surgery fail, no shit. Um, and this is also, I mean, if we fast forward uh, three years ahead, this is kind of still what we see. This was from Oculus Connect 3 just a few weeks ago, and this is, you know, Facebook has pumped in 2.1 billion US dollar into Oculus, and this is kind of the, the, the hand interaction that they can show in a demo. You know, it, it looks like it's kind of glued to the guy's hand. And uh, we kept on seeing a lot of examples. I don't know who picks up a picture like that. It's a very, very power grasp. Um, so obviously there's a bit of a problem related to animating hands. And this is uh, something we see different solutions from in, in a lot of different games. I mean, sticking to kind of Oculus and what they've done, uh, if you look at the kind of toy box demo, uh, you see this kind of um, hand, ghostly looking hand that just penetrates straight through the objects. This is quite a kind of convenient way to get around this problem of not kind of having to care about the collision or whatnot. Uh, another typical thing that we keep on seeing is, is this kind of interaction where objects kind of pop into your hand. Also quite a convenient way because you don't have to animate every interaction from every different angle. You can control what the user can do with objects. Uh, this is probably the most common kind of solution we see when, when you have some kind of hands in there. This is a little bit more subtle in this kind of way, but it's essentially the same. Another quite interesting uh, case uh, related to this is this game, Job Simulator, is, was a package with HTC Vive when it came out. Uh, they kind of make the hands disappear when you pick objects up, which is a very interesting solution. And people tend to not think that much about uh, that they just suddenly disappear. And we discovered that this works quite well when you have these kind of cartoony experiences. But in essence, I mean, what we keep on seeing in all these kind of examples is that uh, these are all ways of getting around the problem of making hand interaction look very realistic. And the reason why this is a problem is related to this little character here. It's called a homunculus. And it shows how the brain perceives the body. Now, the hands are enormous because they are so complex. And this is something we see when animating a, a body in a, a game, for example. This is from, I think it's Mixamo, where you see that you need 65 joints when you need a fully articulated body. But you only need 25 joints if you skip the hands. So you almost triple the amount of joints when, when you, you include articulated hands. So obviously, it's extremely difficult to work with this kind of stuff. Um, so we're coming from robotics, and uh, we realize that there's quite a few things that we can learn from you know, the 60 or 70 years uh, of robotics research in this field. And we see a lot of similarities on, on kind of development of, of VR in terms of the hand interaction. Uh, if you look at robotics, we start out with these kind of grippers, the parallel jaw grippers, where you kind of binary input, you close the hand and you open it up. And while development has gone towards these more kind of complex hands, 
uh, more like humanoid hands that can pick things up uh, very flexible. This is not necessarily a better solution because in manufacturing in particular tasks, it's much more you know, precise and accurate with these very simple uh, kind of controllers. I put in the human hand here as well to kind of show that uh, often these kind of robot grippers are even more efficient and, and fast and precise than our own hands. So you see some similarities in, in terms of, of where we are is right now and where it's going. I mean, we, we got this kind of input controller with a button, a binary input, just like the grippers. Uh, this is kind of the standard right now. It's what HTC is using, what Sony is using, what Oculus is using. And we see more and more of these kind of uh, more uh, flexible solution with finger tracking. But we don't necessarily think that just because it's, we can do more things and use your, our fingers more flexible, that that's kind of the future. We see different purposes for these different kind of controllers, just as we've done in robotics. So that kind of gets us to the, the first thing I want to mention, choose the controller based on the uh, use case. And this is especially true in kind of these kind of contexts where we see a lot of industrial applications of VR and, and animation. We see a bunch of different controllers hitting the markets. Everything from you know, uh, the kind of standard controllers to full body stuff to 3D sensor. And roughly we see three different segments in this field. Uh, it's motion controllers that you hold and you click uh, buttons. It's kind of 3D sensors. Uh, that is essentially a camera that tracks your hand. And you have these kind of gloves. And we, are, we see most of the kind of game applications and, and the, the consumer uh, hardware being these kind of motion controllers because they are simple and robust and they work very well today. We d do believe that 3D sensors especially is, is going to get a lot more common. Um, and what we see, I mean, from working with hands and interaction in other segments rather than just the gaming side, in industrial application, in surgical training, is that in a lot of cases you need to have you know, full finger flexibility. So we definitely see different use cases for these different controllers. Uh, and they all have different advantages and disadvantages. Uh, of course, you have the haptics, uh, which you don't have on the 3D sensors, uh, etc. So, uh, yeah. Related to that, I mean, another thing related to robotics uh, that we, we think a lot about is this kind of uncanny valley effect, when you actually want to use these controllers to represent the hand. Uh, a, a typical problem uh, is this kind of un uncanny valley effect. Um, it is related to this... Um, concept of the more human-like a robot or an animated character is, uh, the more kind of familiar and comfortable you feel with it, until you get to a point where the robot is very similar to human, but it's something that's off. And in robotics, we talk about this kind of, uh, a lot of Japanese robots who try to be very humanoid, and, and they look extremely <coughs> freaky. I don't know if you can see this picture here. It's, ah! super freaky, it's, it's really scary. And this is something we see in a lot when working with hand prothesis in, in robotics. If you have a hand that is quite similar to a human hand, but it's a little bit off, people feel weird uh, using this hand. And the exact same thing we discovered in VR, that if you have a hand that's a little bit off, then it, people feel uncomfortable with it. They, they kind of doesn't feel like it's their hand. So we have discovered that you can get on, on kind of the right side of this uncanny valley in making realistic hands, but it takes some effort. So rather do more abstract representations of, of your hands and you, you can easily avoid this kind of uncanny valley effect. If you do have realistic hands, do avoid different kind of hand personalities as we call it. I mean, different people have different types of hands. Uh, you might have different skin colors. Some people have exceptionally small hands. Uh, and this is something we continuously see as kind of a problem that people don't feel like it's their hands. And very simple things we, we've done for this is that just put on like a pair of gloves and people think much less about this. Uh, this is especially true for first time users. Might, you know, become less of a problem when people get more accustomed to seeing, you know, a pair of representations of their hands that are not their, their own, but we'll see. Be consistent in any case. I mean, when you have some kind of representation of, of the hand, uh, it's very realistic. Uh, you definitely want to make the hand motion and interaction look very natural and realistic as well. You can't have a super realistic hand and then just penetrate straight through objects. We, we, people get, people, they get kicked out of the feeling of presence. Uh, so if you have more abstract representations, you have a robot hand or kind of transparent hands, you can get away with a lot more uh, because people kind of, decreases their level of um, expectation. 
Uh, you can have these kind of object penetrations that we saw. If you have a cartoony hand, you can make the hands disappear. Uh, probably the most simple way is just seeing the kind of controllers or some kind of tool that you use and you stick stuff to it. But that is, it, it is not as immersive. I mean, we see in the research that people don't feel ownership uh, of the kind of body when, when you have less realistic representations. Uh, but do make sure that the motion and interaction actually kind of plays well together with uh, how real and realistic the hand looks. Skipped arms for now. I mean, we see new kind of IKs coming to the market every month that's supposed to solve this big problem we have today where we only track the hands, but we don't track the elbows. So the elbow you see in a virtual environment might be completely off from your own elbow. We haven't really seen any good IKs for this yet. Uh, and kind of the disadvantages of getting kicked out of the feeling of presence because your elbow and arm isn't behaving correctly is, is much worse than, than kind of the added uh, advantages of having a, a arm that you can see. If you have a full body for other reasons that you need to get some point of reference, of course it makes sense, but it's, it is a difficult thing. Think long and hard about every object you put in a scene. Uh, we see a lot of game developers having these kind of scenes where you get in and it's just a bunch of stuff. And people don't have any clue what to do with all of this. And as a developer, you kind of need to make all of this stuff interactable because people expect to be able to pick things up and, and play around with it. Uh, so, so less is usually more in these kind of uh, areas. People are super fascinated about you know, a single object that they can pick up and throw around and uh, you know, play around with. And do make it obvious how you're supposed to interact with the different objects. Put clear handles on stuff that you're supposed to pick up in a particular way. Something we work a lot with is this kind of, whoops. Maybe I can go back. Put highlights on the objects when you kind of get close to it. So you understand that this is something you can pick up. This is something you're supposed to, you know, twist or pull or whatever. Mm, helps a lot in kind of creating relevant experiences. Pick the most natural grasp sounds like it's extremely you know, obvious, but we see all these weird ways of you know, uh, animating hands and interacting with things. Uh, in robotics, we talk about something called grasp taxonomy, which is essentially you know, a way uh, that you have measured and looked at how people tend to interact uh, with different objects based on the shape of them. So this is something that you have online. It's, it's already out there. Definitely check it out because we've seen so many bad examples of actually you know, interaction that doesn't feel natural at all. Um, use feedback. Uh, I think this is uh, probably the last thing uh, I'm going to mention today. Haptic feedback is fantastic when you create interaction to kind of feel like you're there. When you pick something up and you feel some kind of buzzing sensation in, in the controller or the glove, uh, that is absolutely the best way of kind of giving feedback to manage to pick something up. If you don't have haptics, work with other kind of um, feedback cues, like um, some kind of sound that you make when you pick it up, or some kind of visual thing that it's highlighted, or the highlight is getting removed when you pick it up. Uh, so I think that's a little bit uh, about uh, the things that I wanted to mention. My time is running out. Uh, this is uh, kind of how it looks uh, in one of our latest demos. Uh, when uh, this is essentially what our software does. Uh, we use it with different controllers, everything from 3D sensors to uh, ACC Vive controllers, and essentially what it does is that uh, we make it possible to interact with objects fully realistically uh, from any different kind of way. Um, so that's about it. I mean, I have a whole bunch of other stuff to share as well, so uh, if you, you have any questions or any thoughts, I think we have contact information right here, right? So just get in touch with me if you have any questions. I mean, we've been working very focused on one particular thing for quite a long time, so we've seen quite a lot. And I think that's it. Thanks.